Good day, all of you. How are you all feeling today? If healthy, that's good news. And if you are feeling sickly, I'm sorry, and I hope you recover soon. Now, being healthy is not a matter of luck. A person is healthy because they have immunity. So, welcome to BioWorld, where I'm going to introduce to you how we develop immunity. When a person says that they are immune to a disease, what they mean is that when an antigen enters the body, the body is able to recognize the antigen and respond accordingly. How it responds is by mobilizing leukocytes and antibodies towards the antigen so as to destroy and remove the antigen as quickly and effectively as possible so that we remain healthy. How leukocytes and antibodies do the destruction is what I'll be talking about today. Immunity begins with this microorganism. It is called a pathogen, antigen, virus, or even a bacteria. However, it is not the whole microorganism that triggers an immune response. It is actually the surface proteins that cause our immune response to react. These proteins are called epitopes. The pathogen is harmless to us as long as it remains outside our body. However, when there is an entry point, for example, an injury on our skin, the pathogen can now enter and this triggers our immune response. Once the pathogen have entered the body, they are now free to infect body cells. They can travel throughout the body using the blood, the tissue fluid or even the lymph. However, infection is not that simple since the body's immune system is going to react. Firstly, we have monocytes, an example of a leukocyte, that will begin to differentiate into macrophage. The function of a macrophage is to carry out phagocytosis. So when a macrophage encounters a pathogen, it will engulf the pathogen and digest it into tiny fragments. However, some of the pathogen will still be able to infect body cells. When the pathogen infect a cell, they are temporarily safe. This is because macrophage will not be able to detect them. Macrophage can only identify and carry out phagocytosis on pathogens that are circulating in the body fluid. However, the immune system has what is known as the cell-mediated immune response to help overcome the problems caused by pathogens that are infecting cells. To carry out the cell-mediated immune response, we have to focus on the surface proteins of the macrophage. The surface proteins of the macrophage are called MHC class 2 proteins. Macrophages that have digested a pathogen will move the fragments of the pathogen to the surface to combine with the MHC class 2 protein. Once this is done, the macrophage will be called an APC, antigen presenting cell. At the same time, in the circulation, there will be another group of leukocytes from the lymphocyte group, specifically called the helper T. The job of the helper T is to identify APCs. Once a helper T identifies an APC, the helper T will use its surface protein called the CD4 receptor to bind to the APC. And when a complex is formed, 
it will stimulate the APC to begin synthesis of interleukin-1. Now let's find out what interleukin-1 can do. Interleukin-1 has two roles. The first role is where interleukin-1 will stimulate the monocytes to divide and differentiate into multiple copies of macrophage. These macrophage will circulate throughout the body to engulf and digest pathogens and produce many APCs. The second role of interleukin-1 is to stimulate the helper T cells to secrete interleukin-2. So now let's find out what's the role of interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 acts on the lymphocyte T. Interleukin-2 will stimulate lymphocyte T to begin active proliferation of clones. And these clones then differentiate into four different cells. Let's find out the role of each of these cells. When interleukin-2 stimulates the lymphocyte T, the cells that are produced include cytotoxic T, suppressor T, memory T, and helper T. Now we are familiar with the role of the helper T. It will continue to recognize the APCs produced by the macrophages. However, let's look at these three new T cells starting with the memory T. Memory T is actually what gives us immunity because it is able to recognize pathogens during reinfection. So if this pathogen were to infect five months later, the memory T will be able to stimulate the immune system much faster. The suppressor T is necessary at the end of the infection when we are recovering. Because once we are recovering, the number of pathogen would have become minimum, so we would not require that many immune cells anymore. But the most important of all in the cell-mediated immune response is the cytotoxic T. Because the cytotoxic T is what is going to cause a lot of problems to the pathogens that are hiding inside the cell. So let's find out what it will do. Now, how does the cytotoxic T become the pathogen's worst nightmare? Let me tell you. You see, these body cells, they have surface proteins called MHC class 1. Just like how macrophage had surface proteins called MHC class 2. Do you remember? When macrophage digest the pathogen, they will display the fragments on this MHC class 2 proteins and become APC. So likewise, infected body cells, although they cannot destroy the pathogen completely, the lysozyme will break down some of the surface proteins to form fragments. These fragments then are moved to the MHC class 1 protein. So now, the infected cell also becomes an APC. Recollect once more, when the macrophage was an APC, it was the helper T cells that will come and bind to the APC using its CD4 receptor. So remember, CD4 binds to MHC class 2. But over here, the APC is MHC class 1. So that is why helper T cannot help the infected cell. However, cytotoxic T has 
surface proteins called the CD8 receptor. And the CD8 receptor can bind to MHC class 1 protein. So what's the big deal? Let me tell you. Once the cytotoxic T binds to the infected cell, cytotoxic T is stimulated to synthesize a protein called perforin. The function of perforin is to perforate the plasma membrane of the infected cell. So, tiny pores will form on the surface of the plasma membrane and this will cause the infected cell to lyse. Now, the disadvantage is, of course, that the cell is destroyed. But the advantage here is that the pathogens now have no place to hide and become exposed in the body fluids. The macrophage now can identify these pathogens, engulf and digest them. So now, don't you think the presence of cytotoxic T is their worst nightmare? However, some of the pathogen may be able to escape the macrophage, but they still get caught by the humoral immune response. So I'll explain the humoral immune response to you in my next video. Until then, study hard. Bye-bye.